Hello, everybody, and welcome to Chat with Trina. And today, I am so excited to have the opportunity to chat with Southern Soul and Blues entertainer Jeter Jones, the king of Trail Ride Blues, the 2019 ZBT Award Southern Soul Entertainer of the Year. Hey, Jeter. And congratulations on your Z and your um honor last yesterday, I guess. The Jackson yeah. Music Awards Soul Artist of the Year and Song of the Year for your collaboration with Sir Charles Jones on a song called Trail Ride. Uh -huh. I gotta go listen to it. I hadn't heard that one. Yeah. I ain't heard I may have heard it and didn't know what it was. Maybe that's it. All I knew was that you were the energetic, fun, charming guy just always having a good time is all i knew about you but then when i went to doing my little um uh research and reading up on you man thank you for your service to our country i had no idea that was an honor. yes um so we're gonna talk about that in a little bit but first i want to ask you is your real name your government name is it jeter no exactly. what is your Sorry actual it's Gary. Gary Jones. Gary Jones. Oh wow! So where did you get Jeter from? Uh, my best friend in the Marines' dad, his name was Jeter Jones, and uh, I took his first name to pay homage because uh, his, him and his family always took me, and you know they're like family to me. So okay. I mean, to pay homage to his dad, who treated me like one of his own sons, you know. So, okay. Uh, uh, shout out to the Florence family, Camilla, Georgia, you know. So, I mean, they took me in, so um, okay. to pay homage to that, you know. Awesome. My other family in Georgia, yeah. In Georgia, you said? Yes. Georgia. I try to have a southern twang, but, I, you know, it don't always work. <laughs> so, um, and I actually, my other question was, were you named after somebody? But uh, where did you grow up? I grew up in a small town, Mansfield, Blue Town. Is that close right to Shreveport? Right, right below Shreveport. Yeah. Okay, so you ever heard of Shungaloo? Yes. That's where my family's from. Okay. okay. Shungaloo okay. and um, Shreveport. Okay, you know about the country. You know about yeah, the country. so where where did you go to school? What school? I went to school in Mansfield. I graduated uh, from there and uh, left uh, for the military. What made you decide to go to the military? I got the homecoming queen pregnant. So I passed <laughs> up my football scholarship playing because I wanted to play football. Oh. Um, a scholarship offer for Texas A&M. Uh, oh. But I passed it up. Because I, I was becoming a father and I knew I was too immature to be mm -hmm. like that. So I figured the Marines would uh, call me up. Oh, okay. So I went oh. to OK. The Marines, though, like, why the Marines? Um, one, because I figured uh, I do four years and now they would keep me in shape. So I could, uh, once I did my four, I had to go to college and I walked on and play ball. That was the original plan? That was the original plan. Okay. Um, so going to what I was speaking of earlier, thank you again for your service, Sergeant First Class Jones. Did I say it right? Yes, Retired now. Um, I was pleasantly pleasantly surprised and very impressed after watching the interview you did in September 2018. I don't remember who the interview was, was, but this is what I found out that you served 20 years in the military and you served in the Marines and the Army? Yes. I didn't know that that could be done. So you like you did your four years and then you moved to a different branch? Is that how that works? Um, well, what I did, I did uh, four and a half in the mm -hmm. Marines. Then I got out. I got out. Oh. I worked as a first, uh, first class correction officer bucket operator. I did a couple of jobs in between, but most of the time I was correcting on at a local prison. I worked there for some years. And then uh, the call, you know, September 11. Uh, I went to go back in the Marines, but they was going to reduce me in rank. And mm. I, I'm not trying to hear that. Yeah. So the Army took me a better deal. I went in on Okay. Well, I did hear um, one of the reasons that you it says uh let me make sure i got it right you were an airborne infant infantry combat medic what is that what is that what do you do uh it's like front line uh medical you know okay i switched over from uh infantry to uh, medic 
my original plan when I began this was to go to the therapy program. Mm -hmm. uh, due to which still going to walk, I missed my school day. So I ended up, I, we couldn't, they stopped off, so we couldn't leave so I could go to school. So I just ended up playing the combat at that. Just as basically on everything. Okay. Um, you stated in that interview that if you are the best at what you do, you wanted to do it. And this was why you just, and it was best for you to stay in the combat zone. This is why you decided to go ahead and reenlist to help um, your country. Um, how, what was it like? Because it, it, what, what I saw that you were in there with the, you went in and helped, uh, what is it, Iraq? Was it Iraq that was under attack? Yeah, um, I'll first push on You saw a lot, I'm sure. Too much. Yeah, I know, I know. If you don't mind me asking, um, have you done anything to do, do, to avoid the PS, what it, PTSD? Well, I've, and... been, I've been in the PTSD program since 05. You know, oh, okay. So oh, that's good. In uh, 04, you know, they noticed, like, hey, they got to do stuff. They don't sleep at night. They play mad. I play video games all night. Oh. I didn't go to sleep. You know, uh, people around me. Uh, mm. My ex-wife at the time, you know, said something. You know, you got on Recognized it. it. Okay. Thank God you had loved ones that recognized the that you were going through something. Yeah. And and, and the, the crazy part is I had it in my music. You know, my, my stress reliever is my music. Um, right. Look, my loved ones will tell you that I stay to school y'all all day, all night. Um, that's my comfort zone, you know. Yeah. I can't. Uh, a lot of times when I think I can't function, I go make music. It just it me. Wow. So I did. I did read that too. Is that true that you were writing music when you were um, in the military? Yes. yes. Is that where you actually yes. started, or was it before? Yeah, I started. Uh, I actually started before I retired, but I started doing a couple of bands, a couple of guys who sang uh, at church, it's a quartet group. So I started singing church music, uh, mm. quartet group, and uh, we actually did a reception one day for one of our buddies, uh, DJ. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the group members, we did his wedding, and the, the DJ threw a few, so we went back up, and he was like, man, can you sing something to the DJ, go get a few? So we like what we like some circular music, and uh, we like all right, cool. And uh, we actually did Black Street and a couple more, and people was like amazed that how good we sounded. Uh, yeah. Shout out, shout out to the versatile Deliverance, mm -hmm. my first group. So uh, okay. I played with them, and uh, I grew. We grew as a group. But uh, one time we was headlining a club at the uh, house game, mm -hmm. and people was like, man, y'all need to do a music. And I wanted to pursue it on a professional level. Yeah. You know, I wanted to see what could I do. So I wrote some songs. I went in and purchased some tracks. And uh, I dropped my first single you know, while I was still in the military. Okay. Why Why blues? Uh, actually, I started with R&B. Uh, okay. Most time I was just, I was chilling with local rappers, swinging mm -hmm. their hooks. Uh, when mm -hmm. I say swing the hook, we just come in and play the courses. At the time, most stuff I was singing about didn't make sense to me because it was just oh. degrading women. You know? Oh, yeah. And, and watch these uh, get down on the floor, uh, singing about these hoes and all that. Yeah. Like, <laughs> like, man, if we really talking about something, we're not. Yeah. And then having daughters changed me with that because uh, oh, yeah. I didn't want to think about degrading women. And I got two little daughters myself. Yeah. So, well, they think of that, you know, degrading women. That's the thing, oh, I, me and some, some that that's the thing that me and some other people talk about. That it's cool that some of the real music is coming back, some real R and B, some this Southern Soul thing is really really good. Um, so I'm actually excited about that. So music has it always been a part of your life, like even growing up. Well, I grew up in the church. Uh, okay. All of my family can see. I mean, oh. I think about three people in the family that can't sing. Wow. Well, my mother. That's because they took to another side, but most of my family can really sing. Oh, okay. They can sing. Yeah, they can sing. 
because I rated me as a vocalist. I'm like maybe like eight or eight or ten as a vocalist, you know, down the line. I mm-hmm. got some, I got some phenomenal uncles and cousins and aunties that can, oh. that can flat put it low. Wow. My baby, my baby sister, I'll sing me. She's on my my label, you know, Tasha Matt, get in my way. You know, she, okay. she can blow. Okay. I mean, that's just one of them people, you know. I think me is I got a different work ethic. And I'm more of an yeah. entertainer. I yeah. can sing. I mean, I can dance and do all kinds of. Yeah. That that's the thing. It was that a, a point because you are so entertaining. Which when I read about your background and where you came from, I said, "Oh my God, he deserves this fun he's having and what you're doing out there and like you enjoying life." And I love that. So, do you get your energy from the crowd, from the audience? Where do, where does I that other people. Jeter come? Huh? I feed off people. Jeter is a different yeah. personality. Yeah, absolutely. So real me is to myself and kind of with grown people, you know, mm-hmm. I like to be alone, I like to yeah. be a you know, yeah. but Gita loves people, you know, uh, when I get to shows, I don't sit in the back, I, I mingle with them, I get to know, feed off my crowd, and that tells me what show I'm going to do, uh, right. I got different shows, I practice all the time, I, I learned that Michael Jordan could have just been a, 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 a great player, but he wanted to be the best because of his work at Kobe Absolutely. Bryant, you know, yeah. some of the best uh, at anything, you know, even mm-hmm. Michael Jackson. Mm-hmm. I had him in rehearsal, you know, mm-hmm. so I, I try to take a work ethic from people that are great and try to make myself great, you know, but I feed off my funny. And it's funny you say that about the work ethic of Michael Jordan. I just looked at his um, documentary and, you know, people have always said so many bad things about him but one thing he said in that documentary that stood out to me was that he wanted to be the best and so he he acted that way because he wanted his team to be the best for them to be the best for them to be champions they had to have the same you know thought process or work ethic so i I thought that was awesome so it's funny you bring that up what is the most challenging thing about this music industry to you challenging thing is is really if if you're gonna make a hit or not uh, what mm-hmm. would the people take to it? Because a lot of people, we tend to think everything we do is awesome. Mm-hmm. But it's different when somebody else has to judge what is awesome and what is not. You know. Yeah. I mean, my best, my best song uh, from an analytical standpoint is not the best song that I like. You know what I'm saying? Right, right. Like, but I is your my song no, Black Horse? I did on my way to the airport. I stopped really? To eat I did the song in probably 15 minutes. Freestyle. Wow. Never wrote nothing. Heard the beat. I said, I got something for it. I jumped <laughs> on it, did it. Uh, got it, got it, went and playing and flew to LA to do a show. And I come back and I was like, hey, I need to go touch it up. Said it to me, let me hear it. When I heard it, I said, it's all right. And it ended up being one of my biggest songs of oh. Black Horse to date. But, I mean, if you ask me what's my favorite song, I think it's. Uh, uh, R&B type song mm-hmm. called Something About That Rain. Uh, that song means so much to me because my uncle David was my is my mentor. You know, he, mm-hmm. he, he's someone I emulated as a child because he was the youngest of my uncles. And mm-hmm. being raised at the house with him, I always wanted to be just like him. You know what I'm saying? So but he taught me so much. Singing wow. basketball, you know, just stuff that he mm-hmm. taught me. But I always thought of myself as just David. Uh, when yeah. I asked him, you know, he was a deacon at the church, so when I asked him, I got a song. I wrote the song for him because I knew his voice was so smooth and fitted. Mm-hmm. And he, he didn't want to do the song without me. So I, I, uh. I had to go back and rewrite my verse to fit my style of singing. Uh-huh. Uh, my first song singing in the church, I was mimicking him. You know, my oh. grandma said, uh, you sound just like David. <laughs> Every good, so yeah. my song uh-huh. was his song, you know. Yeah. So, all my uncles so, influenced me. So you have a really good um, support system, sounds like. Yes. yes, I got a good team and a good family that supports me. That's, that's so important. Um, everybody I've talked to, um, most musicians i talk to, they tend to always have a really good background um, and support. Well, what would you say the most rewarding thing is about this business? Uh, we make good money. Mm-hmm. Uh, you, you, you. You get to touch people's lives, you know. Uh, I've seen what people was having a bad day and they come to a concert 
and they unwind and they have a good time. Mm-hmm. And they say, man, you made my night. You, you, you really picked me up. I was in a bad place. That means something to me because yes. uh, uh, you touch someone's lives through the music. Through music. So I think that's the best part of it. You know, uh, money ain't everything to me, but you know, my hair long, my money long, and broke just don't get along. So. <laughs> exactly. Oh my gosh, Lil Wayne always had these new words and somebody else, but you have Jude, Jude, like good, Jude. Where did you yeah. start doing that? Do you have any other ones besides Jude? I, I stole that word. I'm oh, you did? One. You know, I made a definition for it, but I stole it. Uh, my cousin, uh, uh, we call him Bissy, but uh, he, he always talks, uh, he don't pronounce that right. He do it on purpose. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> You say I gotta go up the street. He say I'm going up the cheek. So, so. <laughs> you know, so he always say, "Boy, I'm Jewish. Did you feel it, Jewish?" Oh. And he would say it. So I, I took it and I, I flipped it a little bit. And I said, "I'm feeling Jewish because I got Jesus." I dropped the G and put the J in front of it, meaning gotcha. Jesus in my life. You know what I'm saying? So I'm trying okay. to put it on a spiritual note for it to make more sense. So I mm-hmm. tell people, you know, I know you're feeling Jewish. Mm-hmm. Oh, I'm gone. You know. I got a few of them, and I say, I love you, and ain't nothing you can do about it. You know? I like Somebody that. They have to do like my Uncle Roy, Reverend Roy, may he rest in peace. Uh, well, I always say, I've seen him do stuff with people that talked about him like a dog. Mm-hmm. And this was not just being for a preacher standpoint, but this mm-hmm. was being a man of his word. Yeah. And just get to talking about him like a dog, he would get up out of bed in the middle of the night and go help him. You know, he, he was an NAACP activist. He fought mm-hmm. for what was right. You know yeah. what I'm saying? I yeah. think he left before his time. Uh, mm-hmm. But he taught lessons to his sons and me and my cousins as well. You know, mm-hmm. he taught us, I mean, he was the man all of us wanted to be like. Yeah. He was tough as woodpecker lips, you know. <laughs> but he was, also had a big heart for people. Yeah. He always looked out for people. So, I mean, and to sing and preach. But that was the most thing I, I saw that was so compelling about him. No matter how people talked about him or hurt him, yeah. them same people he would he would help them, and he would do always you, say, "I love you," and ain't nothing you can do. No, you too, because part of this business, this entertainment thing, sometimes you do have. No matter how hard you work and how much you're doing, sometimes people don't all, um, you know, embrace it. So that can be tough sometimes. Do you have that? Uh, sometimes, you know. Sometimes, I, I, my my biggest problem is dealing with artists, uh, mm-hmm. like like. The great artists like Sir Charles, the TK Soul, the Tucker, mm-hmm. we're the best of friends now. Uh, they accept me uh, yeah. for work ethic and, and what I've become. They know yeah. I paid my dues. I didn't just have Show a up. Just crap this. I, I was out here doing a $100 show, uh, $150 show, show for no money just to get my name out there. Mm-hmm. I paid my dues in the last five years. Yeah. So they respect me. But the ones that they talk of the ones that are at home baking cookies and ain't got their break. A lot of times they break is on them. It's yeah. not on another artist. So that I'm sick of here. They sick of hearing my name, but they're going to eat. They're going to eat because I'm going to put it in their face. Yeah. My disclaimer is always I love everybody. I like all the artists. I do. But I am big and very passionate about feeling like some of the ones who are just as good, who are really good, but they just can't get that chance they can't get that break because everybody's so used to going to this these people so when they come out to play they don't get the audience or they don't get the you know what i mean so what would you say to an artist who's trying their best that's working hard that has a good work ethic that almost feel like they want to give up because nobody won't come to their shows you got to develop a plan you got to develop a plan and no matter what you got to stick to that plan if it don't work you revamp your plan but you stick to your gun. And, uh, my plan was to win the country, to win the trail ride. Mm-hmm. Uh, I became a king. I didn't just wake up one day and say, I'm the king of trail ride. Yeah. I didn't. People gave me that name. Uh, I watched R. Kelly say he became the r and king to the people. Mm-hmm. You win the people, everything else will be given to you. So if the people are playing your music, so I, I think every artist should get on a quest to win their region first. That I, makes sense. Oscars, you know, I was performing near Dallas three years before they ever heard of Judy Dunn. Wow. Why? Because I was out there in the field. Mm-hmm. Uh, at Silver Spring, Red Oak, uh, Silver Spurs. I was doing trail rides. Mm-hmm. 
for smaller groups, yeah. any groups like that were here, my, my brand of blues. Uh, my brand was country boy blues. I sung about what I knew about. Mm-hmm. Stuff around me, like my boots, my yeah. hoes, you mm-hmm. know, trouble okay. time, that's a country boy. And, and that's what built the brand of trail ride blues. But when I started working towards the city, when I came in, I didn't come in thinking I was big stuff. I didn't mm-hmm. come in trying to mm-hmm. charge uh, $2,000 you know, yeah. uh, or trying to make all this big money. Yeah. I, I've worked with the promoters, and I worked my way into the inner city. Uh, I think everybody should just stand up playing it. And, and two, put money behind yourself. Uh, you should pay for promotion. Some some promoters, mm-hmm. you got to pay for that, you know. Mm-hmm. If you read some radio players, you do what you got to do yeah. uh, to get yourself heard. But it starts with your music. If you don't like your music, uh, I mean, the first part of me, I had got to a point where I was just listening to my music mm-hmm. because I loved it. I was like, man, this is <laughs> I and, like what I uh, do. He could just go on mm-hmm. I like, I like the music. Mm-hmm. I felt if I liked it first, and everybody else should like yeah. something I do. Yeah. So, I mean, I had to get away from that. Definitely. So I listen to everybody else around me. Also, I put myself in markets that would cater to my music. Mm-hmm. You know? But as long as I stayed out at the trail ride, that's all I did. Right. Uh, once I started testing the market, I just tried to dominate that market. Uh, Southern Souls, I guess, is a blend because it always gets caught. It kind of gets uh, into the category of Zodico because someone told me that yesterday. Well, I thought Zod- Southern Soul was Zodico. I said, no, not really. So what is Southern Soul in your... Southern Soul, Southern Soul starts... The, 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 the bound part of Southern Soul is blue. Uh, I think I am the definition of Southern Soul. My music is because it's a mix. Mm-hmm. Uh, nowadays, I mix hip hop. I just recently mixed a go go song. Oh. Uh, R&B mixed mm. with, uh, it, it was R&B music with blues and type lyrics, you know? Yeah. But yeah. It, the stuff we're talking about is anybody lonely. You know? Yeah. It's not yeah. no sweet song. It's just saying, hey, I'm lonely too. Yeah. yeah. I mean, Sir yeah. Charles, the king of it, salute to my big bro. Uh, uh-huh. He was the definition. Because he is the king. He invented Southern Soul. Southern Soul. It, 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 was, it was R&B-ish music, but what he was talking about was blues. Right. But like on a so, happier... Yes. Yeah. Yes. Blues that wasn't so sad, you know? Yeah. The one about the woman who took my dog, he was just saying, <laughs> is you lonely? Because I'm lonely too. Uh-huh. Ooh, it's gotcha. right. And I'm going to party yeah. and get yeah. my groove on. You know? Yeah. The definition of, uh, uh, you know, Southern Soul. If you had not gotten into music, what would you be doing? I would probably be a chef and own my own ref- restaurant. You like to cook? Uh, I was, yeah, I was uh, weaning myself, getting ready to go to culinary school when I retired. Uh-huh. That was my first retirement plan. Uh, all becoming, I had three plans, uh, culinary school, uh, becoming a high school football coach, mm-hmm. and the last one was singing. And, oh, I mean, okay. Music, music was my first passion, you know, that's what. Amazing. Well, I think I heard you say we back up a little bit something about football. So, did you play in high Hello. school? Yes. Okay. Uh, yes. I okay. We were uh, state champions. That was my yeah. thing. I loved football with a passion. Anybody that played with me knew my work ethic was in that too. So. Yeah. I you almost have to have that in a, in, as an athlete. Yes. So. Um, state championship, and I uh, win it. It's in my blood from then on. Like, hey. I just want to win. And so that's what led you to think that maybe you want to be a coach. Yes. Yeah. Do you ever do I like, I mean, you probably don't have time now, but would you have ever thought about doing little league football, like volunteer kind of stuff? I probably volunteer and help out. Uh, uh-huh. the last, uh, I, I was teaching at the school and uh, the last job I had was uh, just being a substitute teacher and teaching at the local high school. And I was coaching mm-hmm. okay. uh, softball, girls softball at oh. middle school. Me and Burton, I'm out there as a coach uh, for the girls, right? uh, softball team. So that was my last job I had. So okay. I just strictly went into. Did your students know that you were te- singing? Oh, yeah, they knew I was. They knew. They knew. Okay. Yeah, okay. I, at that time, it was like 2016, uh, my oh. music was growing. And they, you know, they would ask me questions and I would educate them. Uh, yeah. Like one guy, they had, he could blow, he was a kid. Mm-hmm. He can sing his butt off, but he can read music. And uh, mm. I was telling him one day, I said, what key you singing? He didn't know. 
I mm-hmm. said, how are you a phenomenal thing? You don't know your natural key. I said, my natural is C. Uh, that's my natural key. Mm-hmm. It's a hard key, but it's, it's my natural. It's high, but it's, it's a true C. It's just above the background. And mm-hmm. he was like, yeah, yeah. And I said, hey, what? Well, go down the hall, sign up for band so you can learn notes. <laughs> he was like, okay. And he went to sign mm-hmm. up for the band. And he told me years later, like, man, thank you, man. You helped me so much. You didn't know it. And I said, man, I, I didn't come out here to just be here. I came to make that influence on. Yeah. I think that's what I love about it. I, I work in education for been 21 years. Um, that's what I like about it, the impact that you make. And you see students late, years later and see what they're doing or they appreciate something you've done for them. Um, on that note, since we're talking about education real quick, uh, what do you think about going back to school during this pandemic? What do you think about them sending the kids and the teachers back to school? you have any thoughts? I think we, I think we need to be safe. If we can't go to a concert and we can't be around, why would we put our children? In harm's way. Yeah. Uh, I think homeschool is going to be good for some and terrible for others. You know, if you got lazy parents, homeschool ain't good for your child. Because all they're going to do is be on the internet and doing what they do. Uh, I think right. they should come up with a structured system. Mm-hmm. A structured system for homeschool. Right. Uh, then, then they see, but sending them back to school, if we can't even go and fill up Walmart, why would we send our kids to school? That and my other thought to that, not to interrupt you, but my other thought to that was they keep saying the numbers for children are low. And I'm like, yeah, they low because they're at home right now. But when you put them out of school, then the numbers are going to go up. You know? Um, as soon as yeah. school started, you put them back, it's going to go up. Right. It's going to go up and we're going to all be back at home starting over. So why not just take our time? Um, I don't think what the parents are out more than the kids. The kids. So we're scared they're going to catch them. So we make sure they, no, you're going to take that out. You yeah. Ain't go nowhere. Yeah. You can't go out and play no more. I mean, mm-hmm. We do it with our kids, so I mean, I, I yeah. know, I know, because I, I, we don't want them to get in harm's way. Now you can't go down and play. I hear somebody in their family got their own. You know? That and then so, think uh, about the teachers that have children. They got to go home to their children, you know, after work. Uh, my thing is also, yes, I don't want to go back. If I gotta go, I gotta go, but I don't want to go back. However, um, I was also thinking that the parents, kind of what you said, the parents are gonna have to make a commitment as well. Because when we did this, we went home in March. You couldn't find half, oh, more than half of the students. You can't get them on a the computer to even do the work. So that would be my concern. But that's going to be the parents' responsibility, kind of what you mentioned. With this pandemic going on, what are you doing from going crazy? Uh, you working in the of, studio, right? Yeah. Uh, next week, we will drop West Dome. We've been dropping albums over here in my neighborhood. Uh, okay. Also, I dropped two albums during the pandemic. Okay. My own album, Mufasa, they can check that out on iTunes or Spotify. Uh, and the Jones Boys, me and Sir Charles Duet album, is out too. Okay. So I've dropped, my artists have dropped, all of my artists have dropped the album uh, from R.T. Taylor. Mm-hmm. Uh, the is that band. what the Jones Boys uh, Entertainment R-T-T-T-T-T-T-T-T-T-T-T-T-T-T-T-T-T-T-T-T-T-T-T-T-T-T-T-T-T-T-T-T-T-T-T-T-T-T-T-T-T-T-T-T-T-T-T-T-T-
updates on Facebook or Twitter. So we're everywhere. I'm sorry. I, one thing I did forget to ask you. Um, you know, we're going about to go into a new normal. Nothing is probably going to ever be exactly the same again. Do you have any thoughts about that? Like, we're probably not going to ever be able to have a huge crowd, or at least it's going to be a long time. We first go back, we're probably going to be limited to numbers. What do you think about that? Like, how will we make that successful? I think the world, the world just got to wake up. And we, have to, we have to, like we say in the Marines, we have to adapt and overcome. Uh, we have to be adjusted to that. Uh, mm -hmm. Me, my way of adjusting is just creating a bigger digital lane for me. Exactly. Let me give you more videos. Let me give you more stuff. Uh, that way I can generate an income, but also keep you entertained. Because uh, if it's two or three there, I'm going to steal a party. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. I, I think it's going to be a way, but if it, it don't go back to what it used to, I'm going to adapt and overcome. Uh, I think that's, that's probably the biggest thing is everybody's going to have to not be so um, afraid of t touching this technology. You're going to have to we got to adapt, as you said. I like that, adapt and, and did you say, overcome? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So okay. I'm adjusting. Don't be Me and Steve are kind of new to it. I've mm -hmm. been trying to gain. There's no one in South Dakota that has more music videos than I do. Wow, okay. Uh, why I do that? Because I was adjusting. Uh, so when the pandemic hit, you, you've got a lot of Jesus to look at, you know, mm -hmm. uh, as you're getting them more visual. It's more beneficial to me than some that have no videos. You know? So mm -hmm. I think they have to adjust. They have to really adjust. And I was saying that to a folk with i've said that that you know i have i have a um, friend of mine dominique hammonds he's on at least once a week and what i said to, to them was that you know if you don't get out there at all you don't have no video you don't have nothing when the world does open up people could forget about you and they they mm -hmm. don't go to the person that they saw somewhere on some video or sort of something so you've got to be doing something you can't just be chilling at the house right now you got to still keep yeah. your name out there in whatever way you can yeah, TikTok was a clock to me you know <laughs> and i was just like that you you blowing up on TikTok. I said, in the world is a TikTok? I seen it. Yeah. In a TikTok video, and I said, the video. So I was like, teach me what a TikTok is, you know? I wish so they would teach like, me. My kids won't teach me. <laughs> uh, he was showing me how to, all right, you do this, make a video, this is that. Uh, uh -huh. So I'm learning TikTok, you know? Yeah. Like I said, you have to adapt and overcome. So. Right, right. Get ready. Well, yeah. Get ready. <laughs> exactly. Ready. Exactly. Well, I want to let you know that I, you mean a whoa. Yeah, yeah. Well, um, I want you to know I love your energy, and I and again, I am so like honored. And when you said yes that you would interview with me, it made me so ex excited, and I really appreciate that. Um, but congratulations on all your awards, your accolades. You you earned everything just from what I've read about you and looked at. Um, thank you again for your service to our country and. Thank you for chatting with Trina today. It was definitely an honor. Um, guys, uh, thank you for listening in today to me and Mr. Jeter. We Jude. Did I say it right? We Jude. <laughs> no, you did that. <laughs> what you um, just say? What you just say? <laughs> um, guys, make sure that y'all go to Facebook and look out. Look up K-I-H-Y, which is I Hear You Radio. It's a new internet radio station owned and operated by my good friend, Teddy Lewis. Every Friday at 3 o'clock, she has the Southern Soul Breakout starting at 3 p.m. She has partnered with, I don't know his name, so I have to. I will have to I apologize for that, but he's from Mississippi and she he's she's giving her a lot of updates on this Southern Soul thing. So every Friday at three o'clock, www.kihearyou.com. She's on Facebook and um it's an awesome radio station. Lastly, thank y'all for watching Chat with Trina. I need those 200 additional subscribers by August 31st. That's my goal. That's my vision. So go to www.youtube.com slash chat with Trina and subscribe and then hit that little bell so you can be notified when I upload a new video. Jeter, bye and thank you again so much. Whoa, see you later. Thank you, bye.